we are in Wellington. I'm heading uh, to the next hiding places. This is our start of our journey. Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow, feel like it's gonna be a bad day. Yeah, I'm tired of shit and the coffee ain't hit yet. Damn, ain't that great. We are heading to the two convention, which will still go, but I have a meeting with a couple interesting people or oh, one but we'll see um, it's a surprise and this is just the beginning i need a big change help me feel like living i need a big swing home runs i'm hitting and i'll never look back moving on till i get it all and we all got dreams well hello hello today we are doing something different i am not exactly on a motorcycle as you can see, I am not definitely dressed and also the weather changed. My last video was with the 5 degrees uh, Celsius and now it's about 30. And if you can see behind me, it definitely doesn't look like New Zealand. So, we are actually in Taiwan. And I am on my way to see a motorcycle shop called Sweet Machine. It's a couple of fellas who own the shop and they build Harleys in here. So I'm really excited to see uh, uh, what they look like. So, uh, not the guys, but the bikes and everything about it, of course. But I'm uh, excited to uh, meet fellow bike riders from a different country. Super exciting. So let's get to it. I guess I look here, look there, over where am I scared? Where am I at? I gotta make it in this life. So we found them and the shop is open. Uh, so this shop is called Sweet Machine in uh, Taipei, Taiwan. And these guys are building, uh, rebuilding engines, uh, customizing bikes, uh, mainly Harleys. But you can see kind of cool builds all around here. Just kind of hanging. Little Chinese, little chopper. Cool paint job on a tank, I quite like it. And now uh, we'll have a look at the, um, at the bikes later. This is the lovely gentleman I've been talking to. Hello, hello. This Hi, is Albert, Albert and Jazz. Hi. Hello. So we'll just have a little chat about their shop and uh, yeah, let's get to it. So um, yeah. when, when did you guys open the shop? Uh, yeah. For this occasion, we started about uh, two years ago. Two years. Yeah, and I, uh, this Jess, my partner, he take care of uh, business, customers, okay. and the merchandise, and okay. so on. And I take care of bikes. Okay. And you had the location before this, where you on a different place? So. Uh, yeah, it's uh, up north in Danshui. Oh, okay. You can have a seat. Wow. Actually, we, 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 set, we, we do separate. So, you know, he does the, his, you know, he does tender parts and the build of the and I do, uh, other parts. Oh. And, we, and, and then about seven years or eight years ago, we, we, we met. And we are both, uh, university <laughs> stu uh, students. Oh, okay. <laughs> and, and, and come from different, uh, University and we met in a uh, custom shop. Okay. Yeah, we are we are we are both customers. Uh, for the uh, another shop. Yeah, another <laughs> shop. Yeah. And we rode we we rode small bikes. So I, I <laughs> like, just like yeah. one fifty cc. So I think growing yeah. up in the in Taipei, it would be uh, you always ride scooters, always the big bikes. So it'd be yeah. yeah. Before we started as a young guys going in. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, everybody. Uh, ride scooters in yeah. Taiwan, yeah. but we we want more like scooter style yeah. <laughs> and riding pleasure. So so we choose the the motorcycle. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. I um in Slovakia where I come from, there were no motorcycles. No, no motorcycles. Yeah, too cold. No, ten months, eight months of the year, it was freezing. Oh, minus yes. ten, minus twenty. So. If you have a bike, it just sits in the garage for 10 months. <laughs> it only when I moved to New Zealand that I got like, finally I can buy a motorbike. So I bought my first Suzuki 
Yeah. And then um, I would have loved to have a Harley, but I could never afford it. And then um, that's like when I bought the first Ironhead for two thousand dollars, and I. And it was just a rust heap and just okay you, you buy it and build it. And build it. <laughs> I have a Harley, what? I have a Harley. It's like it's an iron head in New Zealand is about twenty two thousand dollars. No, they can they probably go about ten thousand New Zealand dollars. Ten 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 thousand and um, yeah. uh US dollar? Uh in US it would be probably half that, so five, six thousand. So, I think on average probably Something like this for a uh, Evo, you probably pay more than twelve thousand. When you when you look at the American market, like when I when I watch uh, how much they sell Iron Heads for three thousand dollars American, and it's fully beautiful motorcycle, <laughs> and then you go to New Zealand for the same bike, you pay fifteen thousand. You know, so it's so different. And uh, I was lucky that uh, there was a guy in my village. Who had that iron head for 25 years in his garage? Oh, and he would, uh, he was not gonna sell it, but then we kind of bonded and he said, Oh, I will never build it, you have it. <laughs> that was my first motorcycle I'll build. Like, I had a little bit of uh, engineering in uh, history, mm -hmm. but I never built an engine, so uh, trying to do all the measures and quite I, a challenge. Yeah, <laughs> it took me one year to build the whole thing, and then I blew it up. I went for a first ride and I melted the piston and, wow. <laughs> and um, all that stuff. But uh, it was exciting, you know. And uh -huh. I, I learned that every every setback is an opportunity for improvement. So if I yeah. break something, then I just go and uh, redo. It. Yeah, just stick in it. Yeah, and yeah. found it. Uh, what's wrong with? It. Yeah. <laughs> what was what was your guys' first Harley? What did you What did you get? This is my first Harley. The Slick one? This one. Oh, this, oh, Evo. Yeah. That's my, beautiful. You can take a uh, look. Actually, I uh, only about five years, I think so. Yep. And, and at that time, there's two Harley. And my friend and uh, two friends, they, they own it. And but uh, one friend got away. Okay. And this is his bike. And so, you know, he, he really loved customizing. Especially chopper, yeah. So, so I just have it and customize it into a chopper and it will memorize. Is, yeah. is the what is the tank from? That looks pretty cool. Oh, handmade. Oh, really? Oh, handmade. Yeah. Yeah, you can you can exactly just go in a shop and buy something <laughs> like that. Eh? It looks yep. really neat. <laughs> I um. I bought a 1979 Sportster and yeah. um, I want to do something like that. I want to hardtail it yeah. and lift. Uh, I don't know if I go for Springer, but I just maybe just keep the regular forks. Yeah. But I'll just lift it higher. And then I'm learning how to TIG weld. So I want to re-weld re all the tank, make something interesting of it and uh, and go from there. What about you? What was your first? <laughs> My first is in like. uh, California. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's a uh, 1996... Uh, a83. Oh, okay. Uh, XMH. That is, they are cool. <laughs> they... I, I learned a lot from that bike. Okay. Uh, uh, I was in uh, California and I got the bike. It's been sitting for five years. So I had to do uh, lots of like maintenance and change the tires. Okay. And I just had a part time job there. And I don't have much money to to pay the labor for a mechanic shop, so I just decided to <laughs> so I just decided to buy a, a service manual and some hand tools and do it. And yeah, yeah. it is the first time I work on uh, Harley, and it is it is like a. Uh, I made some mistakes, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah and I learned something, and I. I, I realized that I I need to learn more about bike. So when I uh, get back from California uh, to Taiwan, and I I go to a shop for for learning for two years, okay. no no salary for uh, oh, okay, just <laughs> practicing. Yeah, just just practicing uh, from a uh, uh, 
uh, like all all the mechanic. He, he worked alone for 30 years. Uh, he worked for Newer Harley and uh, especially shovel heads. Okay. And some some old Harleys. <laughs> What do, you, what do you guys prepare? Do you like the small block sports series or would you want to just have a big, big stuff shallows and... Uh, I think it's a different, like different riding style. Yeah. Commuter, I would choose a sponsor riding pleasure or some uh, and more fun. I would choose the old motor like like Shabo, Penhead or FXR. Yeah. yeah. I um, my experience is kind of limited. I only rode sportsters. I think if you build bikes, you always dream about having a some uh, old pen yeah. or, yeah. or something, you know, That's, because it's exciting. Yeah. But I'm kind of I like how this handle. And New Zealand is probably like Taiwan, you know, lots of windy roads and uh, these these things. You just go and race them, you know. It's, yeah, it, it's so much fun. It, it is super, the sponsor is super handleable. Yeah. And what about DJs? Do you, what, do you, what, do you, what is your dream bike? If you, My dream if you, bike? Yeah, yeah. No. Let's go, let's go to this. If you, I, I asked this, uh, kind of couple people before. Yeah. If you have all the money in the world, uh -huh. what is the motorcycle you would have, whether it is finished <laughs> or you would just build yourself, you know, what is the base you know, core? If I got money, I would like, what kind of angel of art? <laughs> if I got <laughs> that money, Every money. <laughs> Every. Yeah, you know, money, you know, uh, engine parts, I think, yeah, Hex, uh, you know, Sportster or like Big Twin or something like that, you know, big is fine. Yeah. It doesn't matter for me, you know. That's, uh, uh, but you say the style, I would I, I say I like Chamber. Yeah. Chamber more than the, yeah. the other styles. Yeah, man. And, and like, you know, you said you said you know, the price in New Zealand is high, right? But in Taiwan, it's much more. Than that. Yeah, yeah, because you know, uh, in Taiwan, we we cannot own it, because because the government don't let uh, anyone uh, get import that one. The heavy, the heavy bike, you know, like like this, the motorcycle. Yeah, so so the vintage bike in Taiwan is you know more uh, right. much. Much, you know, much less. The so few, uh, yeah. Uh, so, you know, uh, and the license plate of the vintage bike in Taiwan, yeah. Harley. Yeah. Somebody say just thirty. Oh, that's okay. yes. So, so you know, and so if you want a. Uh, in spike in Taiwan and you got the license base and you can ride it right out and much and more. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. New Zealand is not as bad, but um suppose there was uh, quite a few old vintage Harleys, but uh some people told me that um sometimes in nineties there was a very wealthy very wealthy Japanese guy yeah. who came to New Zealand. And by all of them. Yeah, and he just drove from Auck from Auckland to Invercargill, you know, from across the whole New Zealand, and he would go on the weekends to the pubs, and he would see all these shovels and whatever, and he says, "Sell me your bike," and he says, "No, I'll give you whatever you want. Would you take thirty thousand? I'm just okay." So he bought all the motorcycle that he could and took them to Japan. So. Yes. Even it's very very hard to find old school bikes in New Zealand. Yeah, but it's super smart. Like, <laughs> yeah. But at that time, though, in Taiwan, we also heard the things about Taiwan. Yeah, Japan is just Japan style. Taiwan, they just yeah. bought all all the vintage motorcycles. You know? We had because at that time the vintage motorcycle is owned by government. Right. Yes. And uh, and uh, you know, we when, had uh, like. Uh, of about 22 pen heads, uh, 1961 for uh, military. 
Okay. And 19, 19, uh, 1981, uh, we have about 60 jungle heads for the military. Mm. And you know, the military bike would uh, would retire after 10 years of service. Okay. So after retired, uh, after retirement, we uh, the government would uh, bid it to to to, to sell the public. Yeah, yeah, sell, sell the public. And Japanese came here, and mm. yeah, the bike now. And <laughs> <by now. laughs> uh, we have about uh, 22 shower heads stays in Taiwan. Wrong. Uh, it's not the, long, the, the the rest <laughs> like uh, all to the, the Japan. It's um, it's quite interesting that when you watch YouTube videos and things and uh, or Instagram stuff you have the American market is big on Harley but I think the second biggest is Japan yes yeah. so many people and you see young young ladies yeah you know yeah. kickstarting a yeah. shower yeah. And, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and they're just oh it's just crazy it's it's kind of exciting uh, it, it's good Japanese uh maintains the American culture and make it uh, to a different level, I think. Yeah, yeah. It's more uh, detail and more like uh, uh, Eastern style. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I th and you're right, I think every... It's like the tattoo, every country, every place has a different take, yeah. different engineering, even different rules on what you have to have for the engine exhaust, how loud it can be and all that stuff. I, I read about um, that when you ride bikes, there is lots of uh, restrictions on the roads here, like yeah. what time and for, uh, for speed. Yeah, and police are really kind of harsh. Does it, <laughs> do the police give you trouble if you take a bike like that on the road, or not really? Uh, we we had we had lots of speed camera. Uh -huh. Yeah, like uh, you over speed, it was take a picture, body. and you'll be fine. And you have a, you have, do you have to have a number plate on the front of the motorcycle as well? Yes, yes, oh, yes. yes. That's and it is ridiculous. Okay. And, uh, the, we have three recently, uh, they are giving tickets to the, uh, louder, like louder, oh. louder exhaust. You probably cannot pass the, the noise exam on stock bikes. Oh, okay. In, um, in New Zealand, it's kind of like that almost, but um, lots of people have a very low pipes. Then they also have a stock pipes, so they put the stock pipes. They uh, go, we do the same thing. get the license, and then they go home and change it to a little bit of a noisy one. We do the same thing. Isn't, isn't there need, need a vehicle on the stacks? Yeah, you have to. Uh, yeah. How often? Yeah. How often? Uh, every for an old bike, every six months. Six months. Yeah, so all my iron heads I have to go every you Six pay months. you pay registration, which like a road user type of stuff. That's for one year. Yeah. But for like uh whether it's say not every single how how do they identify the road by year or Yeah, it's all based by year. Um I'm, I think it's past maybe seventy I don't know. I think maybe it's 80 something before 85. You have a, like a class of vintage, classic, and it's all like a different. Well, it is much more better now. Taiwan is um, vehicle inspection uh, every year. Okay. If, uh, if more than five years. No. Oh, okay. More than five No. Oh, five year old. Oh. Yeah, five year old, you need to do it once every year. And, and more than 10 years, twice. It's a. The, the benefit of having a old bike in New Zealand is that uh, if you have a new bike, your registration is six hundred dollars for one year, and, you, and uh, it's for every single motorcycle. So let's say I have a five bikes at home, mm -hmm. and I want to have them all registered. If they all new bikes, they have a six hundred, six hundred, six hundred, six hundred, six hundred dollars. Yeah. And then um, you you can't ride them all at the same time. Yeah, you know it should be if you do a registration, you should pay it for your license. You know because if you're licensed, then uh, if you do a registration on your license, you just take a bike for ride. But the benefit of if you have an old bike, I can't tell you exactly what the year is um, from 
for the year onwards, we pay sixty dollars. Oh, so I have a older three, is cheaper. Yeah, so I have a three old bikes, the uh, Iron Heads. It's all sixty bucks, sixty bucks, sixty bucks, <laughs> which is fine. <laughs> and I have a two, I have a two thousand seven Triumph. Uh, and then BMW and uh, Beamer, I registered for the whole year. And then you can also choose to uh, like a first phone registration. Let's say I, I ride the Triumph only over summer, so I register it for four months. And then uh, eight months, it's not registered at all. Um, and I can say it's good. So that's it's a bit really better. Good. Yeah. yeah, it's reasonable. Yeah, you can, you can do that. Do you, uh, do you have a plan for this iron? Uh, or is it uh, waiting for... Yeah, it's uh, waiting for a customer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah we, we, I think we'll like to build it like, you know, XR. If you end up with so many ideas and plans, eh, what do you want to build? Because I wouldn't mind to uh, like an old iron head, which is more like a dirt bike. Mm -hmm. you know, really high shocks and off-road tires. And I wouldn't mind a like, crazy <laughs> chopper out of it. And, and there's just so many ideas, but... Yeah, you got three bikes. <laughs> yeah, and uh, if I, I still, you know, my I have a tiny garage and you kind of think, oh, I need more machinery. <laughs> I, I need, I wouldn't mind the lace so I can turn a little bit. And um, I'm thinking when I start stripping the bike down, I'm going to do the hardtail, but I'm thinking maybe I can bend pieces of metal and weld different things and shape it and make it really interesting and um, I decided to get into engraving so my next project is gonna all the side covers the engine heads I'm gonna engrave like uh, the Mexican guys do you know with all the filigree sorry filigrees and flowers and stuff so uh, yeah yeah and I think with tattooing you know I'm kind of trying to get my hands steady yeah, and exactly. uh, it kind of helps. Tattooing on the velo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, even when I picked up the thick, thick, no. thick uh, tattooing. Thick welding? Uh, I think tattooing helps because you can uh, have a your steady hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you just move it in a nice, nice thing. So I think that helps a lot. Um, I, I see your t-shirt born free show. I'm thinking, oh, yeah. Yeah, you big fans. Uh, I will be there this year. <laughs> yeah, you're going? Yeah, I'm going. Oh, man. One day I'll have to make a plan to go. And would you, would it be, how hard would it be to take your motorcycle to the show? Is it oh, hard? No. No? You, you, you I, I, I think you can't even think about it. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah you, you pay a lot, it's yeah. a lot of money. If you want to, you know, bring a motorcycle. It's pretty hard. Uh, I, know, I know one guy called Andrew, he's from Auckland and he, uh, he took his uh, pen head to a uh, mm -hmm. show this year. Yeah, but you know, it's in the States. Yeah, you I know, know. We want to be our Bible our computer and you yes. Oh my God. Oh, I, I, I know. It's <laughs> not being pretty rich. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, it's not the simple way. Uh, I, I wish to do many things and you kind of like, mm, yeah, maybe not. But you seem to have, um, you guys busy? You have a customer you you built it's, stuff? It's quite empty now. Yeah? We are we are we are headed out uh, the day after tomorrow. Oh you were saying for the yeah, so we told we told the customer not to bring the bike. <laughs> oh okay. <laughs> uh, what what would be your plan for the shop? What uh, what if you could imagine the future or the direction you wanna go, what would you uh, what would you do? Uh, you we'd like to 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 build more vintage, vintage bikes and vintage motors and of course uh, the, 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 the big vintage bike in Taiwan is uh, like rare and not that much so we have to maintain our our daily daily expense for, for repairing newer bikes but we will ultimately like to be an and especially for older, mm. older artists. Mm. You think is a there is a I, I googled um, the shop, so there is a Harley dealers and stuff. So people buying new bikes. So even if a 
you know, if you keep some kind of income going to the shop, it's enough work to uh, to work on a newer Harleys. Would people come to uh, to you to mm. get them fixed and modified? Yeah, we do. We 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 mostly we do newer Harleys. New yeah, yeah, we, we but, do a newer one. But not the but not the ladies. The ladies like sort of has something they will they will go they will go to the theater because the warranties. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's always a thing. Hey, how much you wanna change before your warranty expires? <laughs> are, you, are you just waiting? Okay, warranty expires. Now I can change. It. <laughs> yeah. Now yeah. I can go out. What would be the most involved job you've done on a on a bike? What? Like the toughest. The pro- toughest what project is your toughest, you've had. Longest, exciting project you have done. Like something really like what you had to, or even if it's so old and it doesn't work, and you just sit there for days thinking, why is this not working? Like, come on, I have tried everything. Since we opened this, we 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 had we had. Never experienced it. This. Okay. Like I'm uh, when I'm in learning mm. in my in my uh, master's job, in my teacher's job, I like I I tear down and resemble a pen head five times. Uh-huh. I I uh, I build an engine and it starts, but it always like oil puking everywhere and <laughs> and I okay I disassemble it and checking it especially and th- there's no no, <laughs> no <it's laughs> like reason. there's like no reason and I put it together and it puking oil everywhere again and after like five times I s- I, I, I found a, a small piece of o-ring stuck in the oil line <laughs> took it out and we, yeah and put everything back and ver- everything's good wow. <laughs> but but I learned I learned like 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 tang head is is my like the most familiar uh, vintage motor because I I do it I do one motor <laughs> for five times <laughs> yeah, okay uh, it's for me, it's, uh, everything is new and interesting. And uh, when I was riding my uh, Red Ironhead 1972, yeah. the bike stopped. I was just riding, and next minute, just go ah. Uh, and I look at the bike, and there is oil everywhere. <laughs> and I didn't know, so I towed it home. And then uh, I think it was last week. I think last week I've done it, and um, I check everything: spark plugs, timing. Yeah valves and I found out that these rear push rods uh-huh. where both of them were loose by almost three millimeters. Wow. <laughs> so I tightened everything up but uh, before I run it I'm thinking why is it that they are both loose? You know there would be a, if something breaks one would break not both of them or you know valves or something yeah. and then I for some reason I started playing with these nuts mm-hmm. And I found all of them were loose. So the whole head just came <laughs> out <laughs> and started wrestling. And that's why oil came from all the gaskets. Yeah, and yeah, uh, yeah. obviously valves were not opening anymore. Uh-huh. And I just so I just tightened everything down. And she started in the first kick and just go like, oh, duh, <laughs> dumb. But, that's all right. <laughs> so you learn, don't you? Yeah. When I was uh, learning, I got a lot of uh, heads both losing and oil puking out of a uh, head gasket. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, it's like... The, it's, um, it's very, uh, for me, it's very exciting. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I like, because I, um, I don't know, I used to do engineering before, but it's air conditioning and heating. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it's so, already different. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but at least I knew what a spanner looks like, you know, and, um, uh, but, and also Slo- Slovakia is metric, you know, so yeah. coming to this, yeah, suddenly you, you have to learn, uh, you know, what 916s is yeah, like, yeah. And you're just, what is this stuff, and micrometers, and, you know, thousands of an inch, like, it's <laughs> oh, <what is>? all <laughs> The 
that brings me to a question: How easy or how hard it is to you for you to find imperial uh, tools or um, or bolts uh, or the gear? Is it easy just to uh, go to a shop and buy nine sixteen no. bolts and <laughs> no? no. Uh, for bolts, we 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 mostly use like colony. Do you have to order from overseas? Or? Uh, actually, yeah. we, we, you know, a lot of brands like in US or in you know Europe, something somewhere like yeah, we we because there's no shop that you can just walk in. Oh, I need a hardware, you know, bolts or or you know, gasket. No, there's no not uh, not even one. Uh, so so we become a dealer for our own, and you know. We oh, okay. Them. Yeah. Oh, that's smart. <laughs> you know, resource is not not that much resource. So yeah, uh, it is more convenient for us. Yeah, and I think people ride these bikes, and you always need a bolt or something, so it's quite handy to have it there. Uh, uh, actually, I think I think in US or like you know, in Australia, I think that a lot of men will you know they, they will maintain their own bike or their you know. Uh, any hardware in the home or something like that, but in Taiwan, everybody will like, oh, oh, this got a problem. Okay, I just do do mm. go it for any shop like you know, you know how to repair it, you know, air conditioner or in like level. Yeah. So by they they were not, they they don't even you know just bring it up and okay okay I'll, I'll start repairing by myself. No, they will not do this thing like that. Okay. So it's kind of different, you know, living culture. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I think. With uh, with all this, so many motorbikes and scooters, it is you have uh, so many repair shops on every corner, so it's just easy. If something breaks, you just pull it in there, they fix it. You know, <laughs> if it's easy, right in there, and then you just go on. So yeah, and uh, uh, labor costs not too much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, in New Zealand, for me, it's it is kind of a. But if it comes to buying like a gasket for an uh, iron head, you, you can't exactly walk into a Harley shop and buy it. Uh, yeah, I have yeah, to order it in America, and if it's the eBay. shipping, <laughs> sh your eBay, and the shipping's crazy. I was trying to buy um, uh, the springs for for transmission. You know, there are two springs on the shifter pole and oh, yeah. change. They were six dollars and a hundred and forty dollar postage. <laughs> so I'm thinking, it's, no, it's okay. I'll just I'll just use my old one. I don't I don't need. It. And then there is only one shop in New Zealand. There is these three older gentlemen, and they they have lots of stuff in their shop, or they order for you. But uh, it's kind of same same. If I order it, they order it. I still wait the same time, so often I do my ordering. But when it comes to hardware, like buying. Uh, just bolts or nuts or basic things. I can just come to the shop and uh, they have all the different lengths and sizes of 19, 5, 16, whatever, 7s. I need 3 inches, 2 inches and blah, blah, blah. I can just go and buy it and then just use it. So that was kind of cool. When I was buying the bike, building the bike, there was so many bolts missing. I just went to the store. I was there every day. And he says, and they are like a big shop for a... Uh, uh, builders, you know, and they sell thousands of screws and bolts and stuff. And he says, "Oh, so how many bolts do you need? One." <laughs> I buy the bolt. I go. I turn on next door. I'm just, how many bolts do you need? Oh, okay. I'm gonna be extravagant. Three. <laughs> I take three bolts. I go home and and I just buy one bolt at a time and build a bike. But yeah, it's kind of fun. interesting. Yeah. But at least you have these options of you something at least I can buy. It's not so bad that I, yeah. yeah. But but yeah, it's okay. It's still fun. For for like uh, both for motors and for the uh, specific use, I use I prefer to use the genuine okay. HD bolts or from Colony some. Oh yeah, Colony. Yeah, like like etc. Mm -hmm. Like some. Uh, quality they like, have grace for both. Oh yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. If for for like uh, a normal horse, I can I can just to uh, I can just go to a a, a boat school shop oh, and okay. get one. Yeah, fair enough. I think that goes too that uh, the shop has a different grades as well. 
You can get like a proper engineering strength uh -huh. bolt, or you can get just some some you know zinc cheap stuff. For yeah, you yeah, yeah. A little bit of shaking and all the threads come out. Mm -hmm. And 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 it's it's a, a little interesting thing in Taiwan. Like we we can get uh, SAE bolts from the the screw shop, okay. but it's SAE thread and metric size on, oh, okay. on, on the heads <laughs> so you use metric tools okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> this. it is I, I i don't really like this the, confusing the, the, yeah it's confusing so i i don't like the bike as a uh, tools and yeah. some metric yeah. everywhere i don't like this yeah. so so if i can choose i would choose like mm. colony or uh, or genuine yeah. I get grumpy. I get <laughs> last time I was I on this new 79 iron head I'm working on. That's what they do, you know. Original bolts are or Imperial or SE and then um then a guy goes to a regular store, buys metric, and then a tank is picked with metric and stuff. And I'm trying to undo stuff, and they just go, why is it not going in there? And I'm just <laughs> not throwing my tools, having a tension. Like, yeah! I just wanted them. So I change everything. Because in New Zealand, you there is a lots of distances, but it's a big island. And then I had to go from one town to another town. Yeah. Sometimes it's many kilometers. So you carry your tools. You need to adjust these, you need to adjust that, you look at points. Uh -huh. So if you have to carry two sets of tools, a metric, <laughs> anything, Heavier. yeah, you can't do that. <laughs> so, yeah, and I get, when especially when you buy a project from somebody, hey, I've been building this bike for years, yeah. and then you just start seeing this, so they have to go to do everything and change it all to one and one more group. I like the profile, I like the title. <laughs> yeah. All right, I think, we could wrap it up there. This is the guys from Sweet Machine. Yeah. Uh, man, I'm super excited. You can see me. I'm just I'm so good to talk to you, guys. Thank you for having me here and showing me your shop. The one thing I think it would be rude. I don't know if you can do this, but it would be kind of weird to have a video without a hearing and motorcycle in it. Would you be able to start a bike and give it a little bit of a... Oh, uh, sure. Yes, sure. Right. We want to hear a bike. Okay? You can't have a video without a rumble of a Harley. So uh, let's just start one. And um, yeah, so which one is it going to be? <laughs> what, are you, what are you going to turn over? Let's hear. Do you want to kick, kick it? So what happened is that um, a neighbor walked into the, the sweet machine and uh, he said, oh, dude, do you want to see my shop? We just um, next door, right next door. And this guy is a machinist. He makes all the custom, custom everything, custom things, seat fans, everything. And look at the shop. This shop, I'm going to run around. There's a... Uh, this shop called Fever, and uh, it's full of freaking bikes. Can you tell I'm in a heaven? I'm just can't stop smiling. <laughs> That's a proper custom. Ah, uh, that's too cool. All right. 
exciting. Alright, so we'll wrap it up. This is a sweet machine. Uh, thank you, Albert and Jess, for having a chat with me and uh, sparing some minutes so I can give you guys um, see the Taiwan bikey culture, old school chopper stuff. And uh, yeah, hopefully you like it. I'll see you next one. See ya. See you. See you. Bye. So there we have it. We had a really lovely chat with Albert and Jess from Sweet Machine. And we got to visit the next door shop, Fever, where the gentleman does all his um, uh, custom parts. And very cool shop. And um, yeah, very much enjoyed this video. It's uh, nice to come here for work, for tattooing, but um, sidetrack a little bit to um, meet uh, same individuals with the uh, same passions for motorbike and uh, building them and restoring and especially the vintage bikes so yeah definitely put a smile on my face We are home, our uh, adventure, Taiwan adventure has finished. As you can see, I'm fully dressed up in a hat. It's bloody cold here. It's um, something to get used to after being uh, 30 degrees Celsius to come to about 6 or 10 or whatever it's right now. A uh, bit of a shock to the system. Um, I have a few little stickers from uh, Sweet Machine. Um, and also the guy's been too kind and uh, gave me a couple ball sacks to hang on my motorcycle. I don't know, probably means they ride with no balls so uh, I can dangle a ball sack <laughs> on my bike so I ride a bit better. <laughs> I have a one brass one and I have a steel one. So they'll go up. Also, guys gave me this little mount. I've seen them before, but um, the earlier versions, I think a long time ago, they had a little bit of a felt uh, glued on the magnet, but this is properly rubberized. It's called Freak Mount. I think they they sell it. But um, you can just stick it to the tank, and it's pretty <laughs> solid. And uh, has a rubber, what is it, sprung, spring loaded thing. I'm not sure I would like to put my um, phone on uh, on these alleys because it'll probably shake my uh, camera and everything to pieces. But um, yeah, on the triangle with the beamer, it should be fine. Um, yeah, so thank you for watching. Uh, Hopefully you liked this episode. It was um, unplanned, but it worked out. The guys were super lovely to hang out with me for a bit and uh, show me their garage and the bikes. And um, yeah, if I travel for my work again, I'll try to hook up these uh, meetings with the guys around the world. I go to random places. So it um, would be good to see what the bike culture is around the world. Um, so yeah, thank you. Um, feel free to do the usual button clickage and uh, if you have any suggestions about really interesting shops around the world let me know I'll see if I can uh, tie it up with some tattoo convention or um, something along those lines so I could potentially go and visit and um, that'd be awesome so again thank you for watching I'll see you next one <laughs>